Hello everyone and welcome by the Orchid Saga and today we're going to start with a topic of from the uh, whiteboard so a suggestion from you guys um, well actually two I believe yes because I'm going to start with number five uh, failed temps temperatures in winter and the hanging system yes finally our Orchid Garden finally going to make the video if I did remember correctly I did give you a comment back back in the days when you uh, asked about the uh, hanging system but I mentioned that I would film it well finally today is the day so let's go uh, get over into the greenhouse because there are uh, where my felts are living so and here they are my wall of fells it's such a beauty I think I now have 65 something like that it's almost a bit ridiculous but I really really love them and uh, probably all of us, of almost all of us, we start off with the fails, but I still enjoy them. Look at that spike, how long it is. It's crazy, it's beautiful, for example. That's one of the things, and, and the roots I love, and uh, yeah, the different shape of blooms. It's beautiful. So therefore, I'm really a fan of fails as well. And they are not that uh, difficult to grow, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, it's now in the evening, it's around 7 o'clock in the evening and it's dark already, almost dark outside, so I have my lights on. I don't want to blind you, but i just showing the lights, they're hanging above them. Simple LED lights, cool white, and that's it. And in, I use them in the winter, so I give them a little bit more hours of light. Not that much, as you can see, so the lower ones do not, do not get that much light, but they still are spiking and even the newest ones, those later ones, I will do a close-up uh, in a minute, but they all start spiking, it's absolutely crazy. I think 80%, something like that, of all my fells is currently spiking or already in bloom. I never, never had so, so many spikes. And I see several of them making uh, secondary spikes, so that's that's a first for me as well. The greenhouse does wonders for me. And um, so that's, uh, yeah, the lights. In winter day, uh, normally I have a timer. Let's get over to the timer. So I can, I'm not completely sure how I have it set. But it starts here at uh, around 7 o'clock in the morning and goes up to 9 o'clock in the morning. And then it shuts off. And then at night around 6 in the evening until 8 in the evening they get uh, artificial light the rest is just daylight so um, that's for, for, for winter in summer I don't need that obviously so I don't use the lights in summer but I leave them there because it's very inconvenient to get them off and on and they're not in my way the only thing is that I do the yeah those wires I need to I have a plastic bag in front of them in winter I do not spray the roots, I do not sp spray the plants itself, but in summer I do. On the warmer days I they really, really, really enjoy a shower, so I really, uh, yeah, I like doing that. And I use my electric uh, pump sprayer for that, it's that one. Very easy and I give them a beautiful, nice shower in the morning. And then they can dry up during the day, and especially the aerial roots. I have way more aerial roots than normal than than before I should say not that and not as uh, than normal but uh, yeah I now have them for a year here in the greenhouse before that I had them in a home they did okay in indoors but in the greenhouse way better the the light is, is so, so much better so that's one thing there was a question about the light so that's a bit about the light I hope I covered that if you still have questions please let me know I will uh, come back to that uh, if necessary so that's uh, that's one thing uh, temperatures um, yeah I have a central heater here uh, as you can see so that's um, it works with the system from the house but I can there is a little thing there I don't know the English name for it but it's a, yeah, it's basically a smart tool so I can uh, adjust it so I can uh, put a temperature in there from uh, from my phone so I can set it at 18 for example so when it gets cools down uh, towards let's say 17 or 16 degrees this will one will start up uh, heating up 
but I must admit that most of the times I use that uh, this one that will uh, it's a sort of ventilator you you probably recognize it and it will uh, yeah push warm air into the greenhouse and that one is cheaper to use than the radiator uh, I, ha I have now an app and I can follow my costs and uh, if I use this one it's yeah it's way cheaper than that one because I you, this one use gas of course to heat up to get a, wa a water warm this one use electric so an electric is a little bit cheaper at the moment so therefore uh, that one I uh, I like to use uh, so that's for in winter um, to to uh, to get some uh, extra heat in at night I have it at 18 degrees I grow my all my orchids most of them uh, at uh, yeah I can say all my fells are growing in uh, self watering I don't have any mounds or and all are uh, growing in inorganic media most of them pumice some older ones still in LECA but I'm more of a pumice fan so I like to use these days more pumice but and all in self watering so you see a pot there's always a bit of water there I always have a reservoir there so therefore I need it to, uh, to have it a little bit higher temperature wise in winter than you probably would need in bark or spectrum moss. Well, spectrum moss can be very wet. Let me put it like this: If you have it very wet, you don't uh, want it to have uh, to be too cold. So I stick around 18 at night. During the day, uh, if it's a cold day, I, I uh, the greenhouse heat heats up easily to a, let's say 20 to 21 degrees, so a little bit warmer. Uh, but if there is any sunshine, uh, because this greenhouse is facing south east do i say the good yes uh, so we have a lot of sunshine during the day and that's that's very uh, convenient for me I, li I really like it because it's giving me natural heat it can go up to uh, easily to 25 in the winter sometimes even warmer depends on how much sun we have in summer it goes up to around 30 and then if it's uh, really warm i open the door there in the back it goes into the yard and there are some uh, trees there so it's very shady so it's always a bit cooler there and I uh, try to push in as much fresh air from that um, ventilator as I can and this growing season it worked phenomenally well I could keep it around 30 I don't want it e and not even uh, not warmer than 30 that you don't want to overdo it but yeah in a greenhouse sometimes it can be a very problematic to keep it uh, at a certain temperature but so far it did uh, do very well I was a little bit nervous for that because I have so much sunshine on the greenhouse but luckily we have three um, trees there two apple trees and one willow tree that provide uh, quite some shade in uh, uh, yeah the warmest part of the day so between let's say 11 to 2 3 o'clock in the in the afternoon so most of the times that's the warmest part of the day uh, so that helps um, yeah so in summer there is a uh, quite a differentiation uh, as well as in winter automatically at the temperature drops in summer it's a little bit less but it goes down to if it was a warm day so it was 30 degrees during the day it will go down to most of the times 25 at least sometimes a little bit lower in winter it goes down fairly quickly but I have the central heating and auto yeah the extra warm air there so I I can uh, keep it at a level but most of the times like I said during the day it's around 21 degrees so I have still have a differentiation in temperature uh, for at least three degrees and it seems to me that it's, it's enough to let them spike because they going are going crazy with the spikes never ever had so many spikes I will show them to you guys you probably see a lot of blooms but you, I hope you can see some spikes as well but so yeah that, it's almost that drop in temperature goes yeah it almost goes naturally here I, I I don't have to force it I just I, the only thing that I need to do is to keep it at a certain level so we have a day temperature and then it drops and I don't want the drop to be too the too uh, much so the only thing that is that I have to have a sort of safety net around here so it will stick around 18 degrees that's for at night 
sometimes colder days in winter but most of the times it's at night and then it goes out automatically up because we have a little bit of sunshine and the greenhouse heats up from the sun fairly quickly which is beautiful it uh, saves me a lot of uh, money on uh, the extra heaters here so that's uh, that's how I uh, very uh, get very easily drops in temperature and uh, as you probably know fails like that so um, yeah, we do get spikes. This is my Leodoro, you probably recognize it. And I have even a branch here. This one has currently uh, five spikes. Yes, five spikes with one branch. Those older spikes, I just leave on. They still are green. They probably are three years old, these two guys. But they're still there. And I don't know if they're ever going to rebloom, but, but they can. And this one is from... Well, this one is even more further in the back. So probably this one is the older one. Oh, that's nice. This one is branching. So probably this one, yeah, this may even make a branch already here. I didn't notice that. But anyhow, so I leave them on. I never cut the spikes unless they are turning brown. So we have uh, one beautiful here. This one is really, this is the third time it blooms. But I must admit, this leaf is luckily bigger than the previous one. But this... This orchid should have quite fairly big leaves, it doesn't have it, but it has now a root system and I think it's coming back. So I leave the spike on, but I should probably, maybe it would be even better to cut the spike off, but I just, I can't and it's, it's growing again, but it took a little bit longer. Well, this is a new spike from this year, earlier this year, and this one starts again, but as you probably see, this is what I'm talking about, secondary spikes. This one is just making a new one as well. And we have one here. This one is a first rebloom. This is a second spike, but this one is branching and didn't do that before. The other spike is gone. Was uh, I think from last year. So this one is making a new one. This is a first rebloom. This one. This is a fairly big one. And we have another spike there. And that's the third third spike. So what I sometimes do is just cut parts of the tur uh, turn brown. And then if it stops turning brown, I just leave them on. This one, this flower is going over. As you can see, it has a bud here. It's a fairly new spike. This is an older one. This one I could cut off. This one is brown, as you can see. But it also works on another spike and a branch. First time it has a branch on it. Yeah, and if you see, this one is also, this is a secondary spike. This one is also from earlier this year. So this one is a secondary as well. You can see I have aphids and thrips. So and this this is thrip damage. I don't know. I try to treat them, but it's very hard to get rid of them. And uh, more spikes there. As you can see, this one is a full bloom, first rebloom, and it's already starting to make new buds over there. This one is a very big spike. As well, beautiful, beautiful cascade spike. As you can see. And this one ha had a spike and made a new one, starting to bloom, I'm sorry for the lights. <laughs> this is my surf song. First time it has two spikes at the same time. So that's beautiful. And this one is also has two spikes for the first time. But what I did notice was that, I hope I can let it see, that these spikes, if I'm correct... Oh no, this one is going okay. Oh, I thought that the, the spikes were coming from the same leaf. Well, this one is, a, is a, okay, luckily, so that's better. But I have one, I thought I have two that did that. This one is a spike here, and it's making another one here with branches. But, as you can see, hopefully, yes. Those are both coming from the same place, so that's not, not very good. But I only have one, apparently. I thought I had two, but I only have one was doing that so that will be fine but that can be a sign that's why I'm referring to it if you are using for example seaweed too much hormones but I don't think that's the case because it's the only one um, now but um, yes I was a little bit distracted I'm sorry it's also making a cakey so that's beautiful I don't know if you can see it yes but um, yeah those, those can be signs that you're giving them a little bit too much uh, hormones but uh, luckily it's uh, it's okay and this is that hot kiss the one uh, we did, did show in the beginning but this is beautiful what a spike very very big spike 
Um, let me see. This one, this one was tangled up, this spike. It was doubled, but I didn't do anything. I was afraid to break it, so I thought, well, I'm going to leave it and see how this works. But it turned out uh, well. I did adjust again. Also, it burns already. That's new for me. I, I don't know if I mentioned that, but the, those branches, I never had branches. I only had a few flowers on, uh, on the end of the spike, but I see quite a lot of them branching as well. And not a beautiful cascade here of flowers. No IDs, this, uh, these guys. I think this is Bigfoot. I'm not completely sure. Beautiful, right? And this one. This one is crazy. Look how big those blooms are. Beautiful cascade. It has eight flowers. Yes, eight flowers. But um, I hope you can see the difference. This one is even closer. This is a normal size. This one is... is Twice the size at least. That's why they bought it. I bought it at IKEA. <laughs> so I thought, yeah, I need to have that one. And not a beautiful cascaded one there. Spikes with branches here. A secondary spike here as well. Same story here. This one has two spikes. And also branches there. This one is currently blooming. This is spike from this year as well. But it also already started another spike. It's amazing. I, I really, really enjoy it. Especially when they start growing so well. Let me see. This one this is also a beautiful one. A Sp uh, spotted one. This is a second spike and also making a cakey. Basil cakey, luckily. Well, you can see this blooms. I did try to treat it. So sad. But yeah, it happens. Um, yeah, okay, my new uh, fails, like this, uh, Phenoliopsis Cerulliana, this is my first, no, no, my second Cerulliana, I'm sorry. I, it doesn't have much roots and it already starts a spike, so I, 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 I need to cut it off. It's better for the plant, it's better to let it grow. It has some roots, I know, but this will, if it starts to make a spike and those flowers are taking so much energy, it's so sad. It's such a beautiful one. But I will I'm more interested in keeping the plant, so I will cut it off tomorrow. As I will do with these guys, these teeny tiny ones. I I wouldn't class them as blooming size, but you can see they are. But um a spike here. This is my uh Yepon yeah, Yepon Cupid. Beautiful, beautiful little blooms. My uh, Mini Mark Maria Teresa. This one has a spike there. It has one there, so that's two. And I think a number three is there. Again, fairly new plant. I have this from uh, last August, so it's very, very new. It's the, all three of them. I did repot them at the same time. So they're still adjusting to the new system, and I, I need to cut those spikes off. It's better for the plants. Especially, those are so small and so little. As is this one. This one, yeah, last August is uh, August, the same uh, story. I did cut off this spike here. I hope you can see it. Let me, that white dot there. But do you see it? Another one is coming. You guys, you need to grow. But that's that's because of the temperature drop. So normally it's a big plus if you can give it given them the those uh, drop in temperatures but if you have new ones I could just show you those start to spike very easily as well and that's not necessarily what I want but I can uh, I can bring them in the orchid room but same story in the orchid room I have a drop there as well so it doesn't uh, doesn't work so I yeah that's the only quotation marks downside <laughs> For new fails. In summer it's a little bit easier. In summer they most of the times come uh, already being in a sort of growing growing mind. So uh, if I do repot them then they uh, they start continuing to grow. All of these are making new roots so they're doing fairly well but like I said I just want to save some energy there for them. At least I try. <coughs> and here are my hanging my more summer bloomers. Summer fails, how do you want to call them? <laughs> this one is a uh, miniature fail. Same story, this spike is from this year, but this one as well, as you can see. And these guys are doing uh, not much, they are growing. 
but not so much spiking. So they, they, yeah, I think the summer, summer bloomers would like a little bit higher temperatures at night, I think. Not completely sure. I think that's why they call them summer bloomers. So, uh, but I have a few of them. So if I probably will get a few more summer blooms because I really start enjoying them. At first I didn't uh, enjoy them as much, but uh, yeah, I do. Before I forget, um, another subject, finally the growing, <laughs> the growing uh, system basically. Well, I have some wood attached to the wall, as you can see, with some panels. I call them panels attached to the wood again. So we have those panels are not directly against the wood, but there's a little bit room there. Let me try to show it to you here. You can see I can stick two fingers in between it. That's because then I can use hooks. Um, and I have per pot two hooks. In general speaking, I have a few that are in baskets, but um, most of them are uh, hanging. And what I do, I use my uh, iron uh, how do you call it? The iron, uh, well, that the heater thing to make holes in plastic to burn. I just burn two holes in plastic in an outer pot, and I push uh, the hooks through, and then I uh, put them together so they can't fall out. And what I also do is I tie them up together with a uh, cable tie. I hope you can see it there. I use the cable tie. That's because. Let me demonstrate it. Demonstrate. It. To you guys, um, it's, if I get the orchid off like this, it's very easily with one hand, but the hooks stay together so they don't fall over. If they are not attached to one another, they will fall down and they will hang uh, beside uh, the pot. And that's, 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 that seems not as a big problem, but now I have it in one hand and I now can put it back. If, uh, if those hooks wouldn't stay there, that gets really annoying. At least I found it very, very annoying. So I, I came up with, uh, with this idea. It's very easy. You just uh, put them together or you can uh, use a wire. But then they will stay together. They will uh, hold uh, one another in place and you can really easily uh, get them at from the wall and put them back. Um, and especially from uh, when I do my uh, my checkups, I, I, every three months I check the reservoirs. You can imagine I need to get all of those pots off. So yeah, it's, it's a very annoying if you need two hands to put them back. And especially the ones who are higher up, I can barely reach them with one hand. But uh, yeah, if I had to use another hand uh, to keep the uh, hooks together and then put it back on the, yeah. Now, this uh, is way easier. So that's why I have uh, them attached together. And probably you already noticed, but I have two of them, a little bit, uh, a little bit of room in there. That's so the pot is uh, stable. It can now not turn around. I cannot turn it. Yeah, just a little bit. If you have one hook, which I had in the beginning, I, I do admit, admit <laughs> it sounds so silly, but I have one hook and then the pot can turn. So what was happened uh, at a certain point was that one orchid was falling out of its pot because it has one hook and now they keep the pot uh, at its place as well. So therefore I now have two hooks. That's how we learn sometimes. It's so easy. I should have known better, but yeah. I started with one hook and some are hanging in baskets. I just had the baskets laying around. I just bought them somewhere and this one carries two. But uh, so I use a few of them, but they take up more um, space and they are a little bit uh, more inconvenient to adjust than just a regular pot. So I like this system better. So, Arkadgar, and once once again, I apologize. I hope I covered now this, the your question in a video. As you can see, I have those uh, panels all around the wall, and uh, it's very very easy. I can adjust it. I can hang them wherever I want, and uh, yeah, it, it, I really found this system uh, suited. And what you already uh, probably noticed is that I have my fails hanging over the pot. I really like the look of it. Personal taste, of course, as you can see here. This is what you get. They will grab around. It's a, sometimes a little bit inconvenient when I do my checkups, but that's it. But they like to attach sometimes to the to the pots, 
but at least a little bit around the pot and I really enjoy it and then uh, especially when you have like this the spike will come out and it will torch over like this very natural looking I think so I really really like that and then you get this this side they will all come come from the wall and hang over and I now go underneath them to uh, when I go into the house for example but it's beautiful beautiful if you hear some noise that's my heater it's turned on now and the downside of this thing is you cannot use a temperature so I need to, the only numbers on there one to nine I think so I have now this uh, a set at uh, around five I think and for now that's that keeps it around 80 to 90 degrees at night but if it starts colder uh, getting colder I need to uh, turn that uh, wheelie thing on top again and put it uh, I think at 6 and then at 7 and then at 8 something like that so that's a little bit inconvenient but that's how they work I you have um, those ther uh, yeah, therameters that you can put in uh, in a wire and they will give the indication when it's they will measure the temperature and then it will turn on and off etc I know those things are existing but I I do it like this and it's okay so far I like to have a little bit of control <clears throat> I know I know <laughs> so therefore I uh, keep an eye on it and I have an app on my phone because this one is sending messages to my phone so I can uh, always look at the temperature in the in the greenhouse and it's uh, very handy especially in winter but yeah, a lot of roots, beautiful. I can uh, let them hang around the pots, which I really like as well. Sometimes, yeah, it's only uh, when I need to do my checkups. It's a little bit uh, inconvenient with all the, those roots. But uh, yeah, let me think, did I cover everything? I think I did. We had a light discussion, fertilizer. Did I do the first? No, I didn't do the fertilizer yet. Okay, fertilizer will I will do with the light, the hang in the system, how I uh, the pots. Most of them are from Alo, self watering. You already knew that. Uh, okay, fertilizer. Well, in winter I uh, do reduce it a little bit. Let's say it's something around 50 parts per million. It's not always the same, but it's around 50 to 80. And in summer it's from 80 somewhere up to, well the max is 150. Most of the times it's just around 100. And it depends a little bit, but it's not, not you don't have to be that exact I think. But it's something like that. So it's not high, I'm not a high, I do not give them high, I'm not a high feeder. So they do not give them high levels of feed, I'm sorry, <laughs> that was the word. Um, but remember, like we discussed, I always have a reservoir. So if I fertilize, that water is there until they use it. So I, they will get new fertilized water again. So therefore, I give them tiny amounts and they can take it whenever they want because it's always there. So I try to make a sort of buffet for them and they can choose whatever they want. So I like to use different fertilizers and some, some hormones, stuff like that, to put it in just a little bit. And like I said, they can, they can take what they, what they need. That's basically my thought process behind it. So that's why I, uh, one of the things that I uh, really like from uh, self-watering. So that was the fertilizer. Yeah, I think for now we covered it all. We did discuss the temperatures. So yeah, I don't have to do much about the temperature drop. And I get beautiful results. But it's all almost come naturally here because of the greenhouse. In Indoors it was kind of a pain. And that's... Uh, yeah, it was uh, mention, uh, um, it was uh, doable, <laughs> but therefore they uh, start to uh, spike in winter in the home most of the time because then you have a, a, also that drop in the home. Now I do see uh, the spikes coming earlier and during the day because I basically always have a drop in temperature. That's that's just how it goes here. I don't uh, like I said don't have to do much about it. So yeah, beautiful, right? Beautiful, beautiful uh, blooms. I love it. And more to come. Oh, I hope these guys will stay there a little bit longer. Some of them are are quite long for a while there already. But if all those spikes we just looked at are opening up while the rest is still here, I will have a heck of a lot of blooms. 
And I will make a lot of pictures because I love it. A sea of blooms, that's the goal. Who knows? It looks uh, very promising so far. Oh, and this one, yeah, sometimes things go wrong. This had crown rod. I have it now with crown rod probably for a year, maybe a year and a half. It does bloom. It starts blooming on uh, these uh, spikes still. I don't know why it does it. This spike is there, but it doesn't do much. But finally, because I was waiting for a basil cakey, but I think this is a basil cakey. It's fairly uh, wide and not so narrow as a spike. So I hope finally I do get a basil cakey. This is a beautiful one. This is I saw the first time at uh, Annabelle's Arcade's channel. It's this cross. The Yapon Deep Coffee cross with Seng Min, I think, Turtle Dove. A yellow one with a very citric like fragrance. Beautiful blooms and the fragrance is fantastic. So yeah, I'm very happy that this one is finally making a uh, basil cake here. Well, at least I think it is. So it can continue to grow and hopefully start blooming again. So yeah, guys, that was uh, was my talk so far about fails. Once again, if you have still have questions or you did saw something and you want to know more about thing, etc., just leave them in the comments and I will get to them and probably uh, uh, talk about it in, in another video as well. So I hope you like this uh, kind of videos. This one was the first of a subject of a whiteboard. I really enjoyed that whiteboard. I can put it there. And sometimes, uh, like we discussed uh, in uh, in another video, but it may take because I just I have my daily work and my daily life, so I don't have the time to make all kinds of videos. But I will get to them. They are on the whiteboard, and they will not get off before I filmed it. Oh, and that reminds me that we we, we now gonna get that uh, point five. I remember if I remember correctly. I now can erase it from the whiteboard because we did uh, film this uh, today. So let's do that. Let's erase it and make some room uh, for another subject. So here we go, you guys. First subject discussed. You can go now. <laughs> and once again, I hope you liked it. But uh, so yeah, there's a little bit room there um, for in any uh, other subjects. And the rest will follow soon, as we, uh, we discussed earlier. You guys, thank you for watching. And um, I hope you liked this video. So I'm planning on doing a few more in the future and I also have uh, some questions I will cover in uh, one uh, particular video. For now, uh, like I said, uh, yeah, I want to say thank you for watching and I really hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. I will um, do some blooming updates soon. Maybe they're already on my channel. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so for October, I will, uh, I will film that uh, very soon because I have some beautiful blooms to share, like this uh, beautiful Saigo. Um, yeah, and if you didn't already have, I hope to, uh, that you will subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. So now I let you go, guys. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.